Hey everyone, thank you so much for stopping by again today for another episode of Time to Unite. You know, we've been talking about poverty all month long and we're going to keep talking about that and kind of our, the Unite Cope experience that goes along with us dealing with the issue of poverty. But today, I've got a very special guest with me and I'm very excited about it. I've got Miss Lisa Lloyd. She's an author, an a actress, a speaker, and uh, she actually got to be a part of a uh, recent Cope that we did at Wood Creek Church. And so I was like, well, let's Let's have Lisa on. So Lisa, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, um, you bet. Thanks for having just me. Just excited about everything that's going on. I, I want to hear a little bit more about what you're doing uh, too. But before we get into all that, I want to kind of just talk about that COPE experience um, that happened here um, a few weeks ago. I just want to get your take on, you know, with the part that you were involved with, how coming out of that, how did you uh, take that experience personally? Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time um, giving out jobs, mm -hmm. so that was really impactful to me because people were coming over looking for jobs, mm -hmm. and we would have certain jobs, and depending on their wristband, you know, we would give them certain jobs, which meant that they were, um, if they had a certain wristband, they got a job, and then if they didn't have a certain wristband, then we, it was a discrimination type of thing where uh, we were discriminating. Got you. Mm -hmm. That was really that was really difficult and um, and it was so hard because when we would run out of jobs or we were going to discriminate against someone um, just the look on their faces and, and everybody knows that it's they were just pretending right. but everybody was so invested you know they were they were really they really bought into the whole idea of it and then to turn them down to watch their faces and then and then to hear these people who are who are acting and they're pretending but you could tell that they really they were thinking about their families, and they were thinking about food, and they're thinking about their housing, and they're thinking about their cars and gas, yeah. and and the the job thing was they they had to have that, and so mm -hmm. that was really, it was just it was it was a rea it was reality it, it but not but still very a very real enlightening thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, the Cove experience itself is for those of you that don't know, it's kind of set up in um, a time frame. It happens within two hours and you only have a certain amount of time that represents a week and then there's all these tasks that you have to get done within this week right. and I mean it could mean in, in this experience it could mean the difference between getting to keep your place uh, where you live whether or not you get to keep a car or if you get to keep a job or you get to get food for your family that week mm. um, Lisa when um, when people are kind of, of taking a look at this and saying I, you know I'm not sure is this really for me is this really for my church or my community or even my business or at, at the college, mm -hmm. you know, what would you say to someone that's considering, okay, maybe maybe we should take a look at this and mm -hmm. see about bringing this to where we are? Yeah, I think it's it's super important because I think what it is is it's, 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 taking, it's taking the veil off of our eyes, the mm. scales off of our eyes. I think, um, you know, living, living in an affluent area, you know, you, you just kind of can walk around with blinders on, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that to, to have it in your community or to have it in your church or wherever um, helps us see helps us see the world like God sees the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Like so God sees all you know affluent and poverty, mm -hmm. right and everything in between. Mm -hmm. And he calls us to, 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 to be all people, to be the answer to, um, to help others you yeah. know what I mean yeah um, not just passing out money but but entering into their experience empathizing yes. with them yes. right yes and so and so I think that this is really important for for us I think for me it helped me see it helps me connect with God you know it mm -hmm. helps me see people mm -hmm. and situations as, as yeah. truth instead of continuing to live in my own little box gotcha well so to touch on what you yeah. just did um, I and this is something I've discussed with some other uh, people we've had on the show the issue of poverty, I think a lot of times people who are in um, the suburbs of a larger city or you know a more fluent area like you were talking about, um, they have a, we can sometimes have a mentality of this, this poverty, it doesn't really touch me here. We're, we're doing okay. That's really a them problem. That's, that's uh -huh. the larger city's problem. But, you know, what's your take on that? Do you really yeah. see it as there's somehow this border where poverty doesn't affect what what happens in my world here in the suburbs? Or is it really something that maybe, maybe it really is affecting things and you just don't know it? Mm -hmm. I think it's easy 
out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm -hmm. For for all kinds of things, you know, yeah. all kinds of issues, all kinds of crises. You know, just like anything we would see on the news, we see something tragic happening, and it's it's happening, and and, the, and then we we ache or or we're, we're upset about it. But then that just gets rolled to the side, and then it's the next thing, and we forget about that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still it's still happening, right? So I think when we it is happening all around us, and I think that 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 when we do something like this experience, mm -hmm. um, we see we see that it actually is happening, and we see, um, and, and I think I think. Our antennas go up, and and we begin to notice hmm. where where maybe we haven't ever seen it or noticed it before. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that that could be happening over in that pocket. Or like for me, I think about like kids in my kids' school. You right. know what I mean, I think yep. about that mm -hmm. this is happening in my kids' school um, with with all these kids that might be on a certain kind of lunch program or free meal program, and they're 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 in my kids' classroom. But but if I am Kind of just going about my day, and I'm mm -hmm. not paying attention, you know. Then, and I'm maybe not entered into this experience. Mm -hmm. I might just continue to live my life, you know, in a in a middle class or upper middle class, you know, way. And I think it's important again that we that we uh, recognize that 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 we God wants to use us to be sensitive to those in need around us. And how can I use what God has given me, my gifts or my talents, to to make a difference in, yeah. in the lives of these people or you know to, to engage with them to interact with them you know we in our in our um, home we, we've got some kids that we are aware of in our in in the school that that don't don't have some things that, that don't that come from some really tough situations at home so how can we mm -hmm. have them over to our house to show them what um, what what healthy looks like not that we're always all that healthy but you know what I mean? I, I, but like yeah, a healthy healthy family you yeah. know like um to, to to not just handing out money you know what i mean but like engaging relationally mm -hmm. with that mom engaging right. relationally with that kid to make a positive impact in their lives right yeah so uh as we're moving on here so tell us a little bit i told everyone once we started you're an author and you just released your first book right this Good. is your first book yes so tell everybody about it and yes. where, how it came about, where your heart was on it, and yeah. you know, whatever you want to share. So the book is called Chasing Famous, mm -hmm. and the subtitle is Living the Life You've Always Auditioned For. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it because I was headed to an audition as an actor once, and I was really nervous about it. And, you know, just as, I, as all actors are before as they go into an audition, I was running through the lines in my head, and I was, you know, sweaty, you know, just kind of nervous. And then mm -hmm. I just sensed the Lord say to me, Lisa, I want you to go and be more concerned about making me famous at this audition than yourself. And that like changed everything for me because I considered, gosh, what would it look like to go and make God famous at this audition? And it meant that I was no longer going to be on stage, mm -hmm. you know, that I was going to stand before these directors and, and be more concerned about not being enough for them, not being accepted. But God, how can you use the gifts and the talents that you've given me? like through me for your glory even though I was it was like a hospital audition there was nothing Christian about it like you, you know but how can yeah. how can you use these gifts you know through me so that this is worship for you how can I spend time instead of like thinking about all the lines in my head as I speak you know as I'm sitting next to actors also waiting to go in an audition how can mm -hmm. I build relationships with them so it was less about me and more about God mm -hmm. and then I began to see that God's desire for his glory and his renown to be spread throughout the world and his desire to use us to do that that's all over scripture like it like countless people were placed on the planet for for the glory of God and mm. that is that is that is what we are here to do we're here for the fame of God's name mm. and so I wrote I wrote the book um, how how we and I wrote it into three different sections like how we can use our past our pain I kind of share a story yep. from my past how God wants to use our, our sin for His glory and His renown, how He wants to use our gifts and our talents, and how mm. we can discover what those are if we don't mm -hmm. know what they are, mm -hmm. and then how He wants to use Himself through us in our everyday lives, how He wants to get glory in our everyday lives, parenting, marriage, obedience, trust, whatever it is, and yeah. how, how we can bring Him glory. So, uh, you know, I, I wrote it, it's funny, because I, I, I wrote the book on how to make God famous, but I have not got it figured out. God has just wrestled with me so much. He's given me a lot of material, right? So I'm book just, number two. Yes, right, right. I just have you're tons welcome. of material. No, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's that's what it's about. And yeah. so well, that's awesome. So <clears throat> just kind of tying the two things together. Mm -hmm. How how might the 
this the cope experience and, and not necessarily just the experience itself but in me stepping outside of my comfort zone mm -hmm. me looking to the needs of those around me whether they're a believer or a non-believer right how how can i use that as a moment to make god famous mm. god doesn't call us to comfort he calls us to be uncomfortable which is mm. exactly what jesus did while he was here he was mm. never comfortable right mm. and his goal is he tells us and he says in john 17 is I have brought you glory on earth by doing what you have, you put me here to do. And I wanted to bring you glory and brought you glory. And brought, he says it over and over and over again. <clears throat> and I think, that, I think that, that when we open our eyes to the needs of those around us and mm -hmm. we die to ourselves and mm -hmm. we step off center stage, we step backstage, we allow God to stand center stage in our lives, then, then we do begin to see the needs around us. And we do begin, and, and I think that often, I think making God famous um, through the COPE experience or through seeing poverty, like mm -hmm. opening our eyes, um, we have to put our agendas on the back burner. We put our calendars on the back burner. We mm. allow our lives to get interrupted, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, we, we invite somebody over to our house when, gosh, I'd rather just, you know, sometimes I just want to sit and like close my doors and my windows and like, let's just, you know, get comfortable and just <laughs> nestle down into the couch and like yeah. nobody. But, um, but I think it's, it's, it's opening our homes. It's um, opening our hearts. It's opening our calendars and our schedules. Um, it's hard, but like when I look at, but, but it's so rewarding, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's like any time I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that because that's going to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. But then I, if I do it, oh my gosh, I'm always so glad that I did it, right? Yeah. I'm always I'm like, I, there's nothing like that. I'm so glad that I, so glad that I did the cope experience. Although I had to mess up my calendar yeah. and I had to engage emotionally in something that was difficult. Man, on the other end of it, I'm so glad that I did it because it gives me a bigger picture of God and what He's yeah. all about. Yeah. So for everybody watching, yeah. where can they get a copy of your book? You can get it um, wherever books are sold. Wherever books are sold, wherever all over the sold. place. <laughs> you can get it at Amazon. You okay. can get it at um, Barnes & Noble, Lifeway. Awesome. Um, well, that's all we've got for you today. I want to thank Miss Lisa. Thank yes, you so much for being bet. with me. Absolutely. Um, if you want to find out more about the COPE experience and how we can bring it to your church, your neighborhood, your community, uh, your school, or business, you can go to www.unitethechurch.org forward slash COPE, C-O-P-E. And until next time, thank you so much for joining us right here on Time to Unite. God Yay. bless.